morning people. We are gonna work on a few different things. I'm looking for some parts for my tractor. I printed off some papers here and I'm off to the shop to see if I can find them all. The fenders came off the tractor, uh, I don't know, before we moved west here and I wanna put them back on. I've been wanting to do that for a while, never get around to it. So one of those projects I'm doing now. Okay, here we are again. This is what we're working on. These plates here, they bolt onto the axle. There's four bolts holding them on. And then this bolt comes up through, which in my opinion is a major weakness in these fenders. It's very, very, very th uh, fine thread. It doesn't hold worth beans. So if you get that fender caught on something, it strips that thread pretty quick. Um, anyway, the bolt you can't buy on its own. I thought that would be the simple solution, buy a new bolt. I tried that back in Ontario when I lost one of these fenders uh, on a roll of bales one time. And you can't do that. You have to buy the entire assembly of plate and bolts and uh, and this middle bolt with the bearings and everything new again these are the fenders so that bolt that was sticking up on that plate sticks up, up through this hole here with another bearing and then the nut is in there still so what i'm gonna try to do is um i think we can just get our own bolt and get a bearing that matches the bolt and shove it up through there regardless of what they say at least i'm going to try that if not we'll just buy the part that belongs to it but uh, I always enjoy a, a little project, so that's what I'll be working on. All right, we are uh, going to do a parts run. It's a little cold outside today to work at home, and I'm kind of caught up as far as outside stuff that I can do right now, or at least it needs to be done. Uh, no point doing it on a cold day if I don't have to, so i got to run off to Case IH, like an hour and a half ride away. Uh, grab some parts for the Puma, just the pins for the loader and uh, I got a few other things to run around in town, drop some checks off and things like that. And that's all part of everyday, day-to-day -day life too. You got uh, running around, bills to pay, people to see, stuff to do. And uh, we're gonna make kind of a family day of it as we all will go out. Uh, not like we're gonna do anything overly exciting, but uh, it's nice to take a road trip, especially on a sunny day like today. It's absolutely stunning out there, it's beautiful. It's a full blue sky, not a cloud in sight. And uh, that just makes things very enjoyable and we like to just get out as a family and enjoy that and see what God has made and um, yeah, rejoice in that. It's, uh, it's not every day that it's sunny and I think too often we spend uh, our time with our heads in the sand complaining about how the weather is not favorable or not nice and we just need to just get out and, and uh, appreciate every day that we've been given and choose to see it as a blessing and um, yeah, just, just choose to look for that bright spot in every single day. So that is what we're up to. Hello again. We, uh, we ended up having a nice day out. It was a beautiful sunny day and had uh, just a nice time driving, picking up some parts and stuff. We didn't end up filming any. I don't know why not. Just never thought of it, I guess. So, uh, And we came home again yesterday. So we are now out. I'm going to go to the shop and look at some of those parts and get that uh, going. I want to get my fenders put on the tractor today, hopefully. Uh, we did have some... Someone come in yesterday definitely interested in the place, so hopefully that'll materialize he figured he'd be back again today uh, with some more Information for us, so we're uh, we're really looking forward to that. Hopefully that that works out well um, Yeah, we're gonna go work on that but this morning. It, it dropped again. It's minus 26 here this morning And it's supposed to be minus 4 by this afternoon. This is all in Celsius if you're watching from the States where uh, we use Celsius here I don't know what that would be in Fahrenheit I'm not good at my conversions there, but minus 26 Celsius, and it's supposed to be minus 4 by this afternoon, so that's really going to change uh, quite quite drastically. I don't know if you can see way back there. It looks kind of foggy there. Maybe that's where the, the hot and the cold's meeting. I have no idea. And then tomorrow, we're actually supposed to be in the pluses. So that'll be nice. It'll melt some more of the snow off. You can see the big mountain of snow there. Uh, from the house, I can see how deep that goes. It goes quite a ways back. It's going to take a while to melt this spring. It'll be a big iceberg here for a while. So, Anyway, that is what I'm up to. I'm going to go and work on those parts. All right, so these are the plates. They go for my fenders. They sit up on here. Uh, this way, actually. And the fenders mount to this bolt on the top. So from factory, that bolt comes with very, very fine thread and uh, very easy to strip off. So if you get your fender hooked on, well, in this case, it got hooked on a roll of bales, but whatever, and you're driving by something and then you turn your tires and it gets hooked on something, then that'll just shred right off. And that's what I have had happen uh, twice now. And um, it's just because these threads are cheap. 
just too thin. So I brought it to the machine shop this time. This part here, this plate with the bolt is $210 from Case. And the nut that comes with it is another $30 or $40 just for the nut. So I took it to the machine shop this time instead and got them to re-thread it and make me a new nut. Which for both of them plus a cylinder job that I had them do, uh, I needed a cylinder repaired for all that together with tax was only $120. So definitely a wise idea there. So I'm going to bolt these back on, goes four bolts on each side. This guy here is so when the fender turns, this is a stop and it can only go so far. The idea is that uh, when it's on a tire and you turn your tires, you want it to be able to turn with it. But of course the tire turns pretty sharp and you don't want your fenders to hit here. So there is a stop as far as how far it goes and then they're spring loaded so they'll, they'll spring back again if you turned them uh, just by hand. So I'm looking forward to getting them back on. I always uh, like to look at the fenders on here and it also keeps a lot of mud from splashing up. Um, I haven't driven in any mud lately but like on this side per se it'll all splash all the way up the fuel tanks here and up onto the windows and it just makes a mess. So it'll be nice to get them put back on again. There's the bolts there. We stuck them back in the holes. And... All right, so I got the bearing to slide on there nicely. Spins great. We're going to mount that onto the tractor. So this is for oh, this side over here. So pull those bolts out and mount this on. So I got that bolted back on. But I did notice that when I put this bearing on, um, just the tool I was using, I was using a big socket to get it to sit and I've got a couple burrs here. So I'll file those off because the fender component sits over top of this and then uh, another bearing slides in uh, on top of that. So I don't think it's gonna slide over there. So we'll file that off. Anyways, we got this fender on. I gotta adjust it yet. You can see the gap down here is too big compared to this gap, so I gotta get it all adjusted into place. But uh, at least the re-threading worked. We had a bit of a time getting this guy on, but he's on there now. So anyway, they uh, when you steer sharp enough, this would hit the, the fender could hit the side of the tractor, and it's spring-loaded to prevent that so that this can bend and then it just springs back into place. So they're pretty cool. But we gotta adjust all these bolts and stuff. 
All right, got her done. Get back outside now again. And it's actually, whoa, slippery here. It uh, was minus 26, like I told you this morning. It's now around minus six already. It's warmed up that much. So, and uh, in the sunshine, the, uh, the snow and stuff in front of the shop here is actually melting. It's amazing how much difference that can make. So we're looking forward to that warmth. I'll uh, give you a glimpse of this sucker here. So I managed to straighten that. This one here is the one that was bent. You straighten it right up with a bit of heat. Looks like this corner maybe I could do a little bit as well, but uh, not too bad. Got her back on again, which is good. It's been off for too long. Made an awful mess cruising down the road last year. Going to different farmers and stuff. But now she's back together. And uh, we got them adjusted. So. Next project for today is uh, getting my camp trailer pulled out. It's sitting back there in the snow. And uh, I want to get it pulled out of there and brought up. And uh, well, I'll show you what I'm going to do on it when I get it pulled up. But I want to make a spot for the generator on the back of that. We're hoping to go away for a bit in a uh, number of weeks and start looking for uh, some possibilities for a new homestead and where we want to go. So we have a few places and a few ideas of what we would like in a homestead. Our plan in a future video for that as well, just kind of highlighting some of the main things that we feel we would need uh, to, to have a workable homestead, to have something that's going to function and work well for our family, be profitable uh, spiritually and financially. And uh, yeah, so, so we have some ideas and there's certain places where we can do the things that we would like to do. And um, we're going to tour around some of those areas. So hopefully start that shortly. And, but yeah, I want to get the trailer ready to go. pulled up and feel like camping. Can't imagine driving down the highway like that though. Well, it would be kind of fun. So anyway, we've got her pulled up here so we can get ready, get it uh, cleaned up, ready to go. And um, also start packing some stuff in it, whatever we want. We built this, we built this uh, bike rack on the back. Did that, so uh, I don't know, shortly after we bought it. So all our bikes can stand up here. And then the kids bike some of the shorter ones up here. And underneath here, I've been planning on for the generator down in the side here. So I'll have to modify a little bit because the generator I ended up buying is actually a bit bigger. But that's the plan there and that's why I want to park it right here so I can work on that in the next little while. That's that. I uh, just want to remind everybody if you have not checked out our giveaway, it's called 4 of 4 for 400. Uh, in honor of uh, getting to 400 subscribers, we wanted to do another giveaway and we also wanted to include some other YouTube families in that. So I think it's a lot of fun. I think the people that have done it so far, uh, they all seem to think it's it's been fun. So I want to encourage you, if you haven't checked that out yet, go do so. Look at those other channels. Uh, watch those videos. If you want, you can subscribe to them. And uh, also just leave it in the comments that Countryside Acres sent you. And you will be eligible in our draw. And we're going to do that this coming Saturday. So uh, don't forget about that and get in on that. And thanks for watching. Talk to you later.